This is Larry. He's a grad student in the biology department at MIT, and he's going to show us how to do a Western blot from beginning to end. So Larry has six different samples. They're each mammalian cells that have been engineered to overexpress a different human protein. Larry's removing the media, and then he's going to wash them to make sure all the media is gone before adding lysis buffer. Larry is preparing whole cell lysate, which includes all the proteins inside the cell, and then he scrapes to physically remove the cells from the Petri dish. Yeah, so this is basically once you put the lysis buffer and scrape, um, all of the cells are essentially popped open, the, the membranes are gone, and uh, they're off the plate from the scraping. So now all of Larry's samples are in Eppendorf tubes with a blue loading dye added to them to help visualize them. He's going to load them into a precast polyacrylamide gel, and the buffer that he's going to add to the box is an SDS buffer. SDS is a detergent, and this is going to denature all the proteins so they're unfolded, coated in negative charge, and they're going to run based on size, the smallest proteins running the farthest. When would you use a native gel, a uh, non denaturing gel? You can see like kind of protein interaction sometimes. Uh -huh. Also, like you could in theory see like conformational changes. And... I see. But most Western blots are done with denaturing SDS gels. Yeah. yeah. The first sample is a mixture of proteins of known sizes. We call this ladder. And you can use that to compare your samples so you can see how big the different proteins are. Larry's actually loading his samples into two gels, a 12% gel, good for visualizing larger proteins, and a 16% gel, good for visualizing smaller proteins. So now, now you're going to apply some sort of electric current? Yep. Or? yep. Uh, basically, the assumption is that SDS coats everything. SDS is negatively charged. The proteins run through the gel towards the positive charge at the bottom of the box, and you can monitor the dye front to make sure that they don't run off the gel. So now that the proteins have all been separated in this gel by size, Larry's chopping off the top of the gel, which doesn't contain any proteins, and he's gonna set up his transfer sandwich. Now in this step, we transfer everything that's on the gel onto a nitrocellulose membrane. And that's because the gel is really fragile and the proteins in the gel aren't accessible to antibodies. You can see that Larry is using a roller to remove bubbles from the sandwich. What happens if you get bubbles in your um, in your transfer? They like actually prevent the protein from going through, so it looks like there's just a blank space. I see. Yeah, it's ugly. Okay, so here's your blank membrane. Yep. So it's always you know it's always like run to red, black to red. Oh. So there's membrane there. Larry's using the black and red colors to help him orient the cassette in the right direction, negative to positive. Larry, can you estimate how many Western blots you've done in your PhD? Uh, uh, well, let's see. It's almost experiment 300, and that only counts Western experiments for the most part. So uh, probably close to 1,000 to 1,500, I guess. That's the day to day. So to transfer all the proteins to the membrane, Larry is once again going to utilize the fact that the proteins are negatively charged. He's going to apply an electric field, and they'll migrate towards the positive end. You can tell that it's working because of these bubbles rising from the box, and they'll stick to the nitrocellulose membrane. So this guy will be done in two hours. So now our proteins have been transferred to the nitrocellulose membrane and we're going to probe them with an antibody that recognizes a specific protein of interest. That's a job. You want to take a look at the membrane, actually. You can, see, you can see the ladder. And seeing that the ladder has transferred to the membrane is one of the ways we know our transfer step worked. Each of those colors in the ladder represents a different protein of a known size, so we can compare our protein samples to the ladder. Now, before Larry incubates his membrane with antibody, he's going to wash it and then put it in a blocking solution made of milk, and this will prevent non-specific binding of the antibody to random proteins. Okay, right there. And so, 15 minutes, half an hour, something like that. Now Larry's gonna incubate his membrane with the primary antibody. This is the antibody that specifically binds to the protein of interest. 
These antibodies can be very expensive, so to minimize the amount he'll need, Larry's going to seal the membrane into a little plastic baggie, minimizing the volume needed of the primary antibody. Here Larry is pipetting his antibody into the little plastic baggie. He's going to make sure that the whole membrane is wet and saturated in the antibody solution, and then he's going to seal the top. Now the blot that's incubating with the primary antibody is left on a shaker overnight. The next day, this antibody will be washed and the process repeated with the secondary antibody. These guys were in secondary, but now we are in PBSC washing. So now that Larry's proteins have been bound by a primary antibody, and then the primary antibody has been bound by a secondary antibody, we need to visualize the signal. And to do that, we're going to add a substrate that's converted into light by an enzyme that's attached to the secondary antibody. Side note, if you want to see what this substrate looks like when it's converted into light, check this out. Whoa! So at this point, Larry's blots are emitting light, and to visualize the signal, he's going to put them in a film cassette, take them to the dark room, and expose them to a piece of photographic film. If there's light being emitted, it'll manifest itself as a dark band on the film. Here we come to the moment of truth. This is actually going to be a long exposure. Um, How long? Well, I'll do a quick one, um, like 30 seconds, and then I got to do one for like 10 minutes. The exposed film is then inserted into the developer, and what emerges is the final product of a Western blot a piece of film where the dark bands represent binding of the primary antibody to the protein of interest, amplified by the secondary antibody binding and converted into light signal in developing a blot. So that's 50 KD, 70 KD. By laying the film on the blots, Larry can determine the size of his protein bands by comparing them to the latter and the relative intensity of the bands corresponds to the amount of protein in the sample. And that's the Western blot from beginning to end.